Mario. Do we have anything stronger than that? Seven dollars and sister and everyone in the name of the <laughs> this is new. Why you designate the uh, drivers out there? Yeah. yeah. No, that's the point. Okay. Okay. Move that around. Move that around. Uh, okay. And then. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm going to make a long string for a cross, and then we'll have a loop at the other end. So we'll just let that go. I'm going to let you two work it out. <laughs> So that's all really interesting. Ooh. It's Martin. <laughs> For $16.09. I'm very well, how are you? Good. Coming here to enjoy the service. Okay. And we're filming for um, the Klein Hutton YouTube channel. You can say hello if you like. Hello. Should be here. So there's a Klein YouTube channel? Yes. Oh, no. I'm a bean. I'm happy to say hello. Several years ago, I was here and played pipes for the installation of these cats. Hi everyone, I'm Cindy McIntosh with Klein Hutton and we are here at the McBain um, Memorial Park and we're just walking around before we get started with the actual service today and I ran into um, a member of the clan here and what is your name? Diane Bean. Oh and where do you come from? Um, originally um, we came in from the main area but I now live in Florida. Very nice. Well, welcome. Have you been here before? Is this your first time? This is my first time. Welcome. We're so happy you're here. I'm so thrilled to be at the family Lance. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for being on with us today, and we are looking forward to the Colin McBain. Wonderful. And is this your first time at the Memorial Park? I was here five or six years ago. Oh, I was piping then. You probably saw me piping when we laid the cats, put the into the cats, I'm not sure. Very, very nice. So well, welcome. And where do you stay? I live across the bridge from Inverness in the Black Isle. Oh, wonderful. I love the Black Isle. All my life. Oh my goodness. Well, lovely to meet you here. And thank you for being willing to be on our YouTube channel. We're saying hello to McBain's from around the world. Right. Okay. Lovely. Hello to all the McBain's. My name is Sharon, last name Cox. And you're a client I'm, member? Um, I'm from Las Vegas. Oh, and my mom was a bait. Oh, wow. Okay. And you came all the way to participate. How many miles away? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, wonderful. It's good to see you here and everyone else with Clan McDay. So, so you go ahead and tell, tell us what your name is. My name is Sophie. Hi, Sophie. And you have come from where? I come from California. Oh my goodness, all the way to Scotland to participate in the McVeigh uh, celebration here today at the Memorial Park. 
Welcome. Have you been to Scotland before? Is this your first time? This is my first time. Oh, and what have you enjoyed? Yes. Come forward this way. Will let everyone go by. Well, and what things have you been um, doing while you've been here? And what has been your favorite thing? Um, probably. Um, well, well, this is how it coming in from Tuesday, hopefully. But I, I think I'll still and be which castle's your favorite so far? So Do you have a favorite? It's not, it's not um, I'm not sure what it's but, uh, called, but we. Um, the McMains used to own it. Very How wonderful. So are you proud of your Scottish heritage? Yep. You'll come back again many times? Yeah, probably. Hopefully so. Well, it's wonderful to meet you here and thank you so much for being here today. It's wonderful to meet you too and I'm glad. Bye for now. It's exciting to be back here, isn't it? It is. Oh my it gosh. Is. Nice it's nice to see you again. It's nice to see you as well. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. I wanted to show everyone this beautiful new monument. And actually, for anyone wanting to come over to Scotland, um, it's fairly easy to find this memorial park. It's actually on Google, or I used Waze, and it brought me right here. And we are on the banks of Loch Ness. And here's some more information about climbing the bay. And of course, they have a wonderful website, Clan Hatton. Thank you to all the donors. Yeah. Who made this memorial possible? Yeah, we got our Alan Laverne Dean, who was the U.S. astronaut, who we are honoring today. And this is Richard McBain of McBain. Hello, Richard. Very well done. Congratulations. Yes, look at our plaza. <laughs> yes, we were just telling the world how to get here, where this is located, and showing how beautiful it is here. Loch Ness. In this direction. In, 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 the, in the winter time, when there's no leaves on the trees, it's yes. a gorgeous view. It's absolutely beautiful. We are actually working with the farmer to get those trees removed. Oh, <laughs> well, it's still beautiful nonetheless. Yes. And hopefully everyone will come and enjoy. I think we're going to have a huge turnout, and you can see just the beginnings of the crowd now. <laughs> Many more to come. Members of Clan Hatton, and there's Lady McIntosh, still yet. And other people coming up the road just now. I think she would always be a so, um, you've had the instructions and things. Have you been up to the top? Oh, up, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, we have, yeah.
invite Richard McBain. Welcome. I think it's going to be a problem. <laughs> it's special. We have a good crowd. Um, I'm done. We have support. And we have a foundation. Uh, I, I will have more words to say later, but I hope very much that I can uh, do what needs to be done. <laughs> and I hope you all enjoy this day as much as I do. I'd like to invite Councillor Ian Brown, leader of the City of Inverness and area, very kindly, at very short notice, stood in for the provost of Inverness who has caught COVID, no less. On November 14, 1969, Apollo 12 spaceship Yankee Clipper broke free from the gravitational pull of Earth and flew 234,000 miles to our moon. The spaceship held the crew of Apollo 12, astronauts Pete Conrad, Dick Gordon, and my father, Alan Bean. It was a three-day journey much faster than our early ancestors' trip to the New World. Apollo 12 entered lunar orbit, and after three trips around the moon, Pete and Alan climbed into the lunar module Intrepid. In a cloth bag, Alan carried a piece of the McBean clan tartan, and in his heart, 
Alan carried the courageous spirit of our clan, a brave spirit that resides in every McBean clansman today. The astronauts undocked from the command module flew down to the lunar surface, landing on the area known as the Ocean of Storms. They planted the American flag deployed scientific experiments, and gathered rock samples. On the second day, they walked over to an unmanned lunar probe, Surveyor 3, that had landed on the moon 18 months earlier. Pete cut off the probe's shovel, a cable, and its camera to take back to Earth for study. The men had carried out their mission performed their duty, and they returned home. A piece of that McBean tartan resides in the St. Bean Chapel in Scotland, an artifact, a physical representation of our clan's first exploration of the universe. Today, you dedicate a memorial to Alan Bean at the McBain Family Park my family is honored by your remembrance of my father and his achievements. And I miss being with you for this special moment. My father often spoke of his life, moonwalking experiences, and at the end of every speech, he left the audience with his personal prayer. And I pass it on to his fellow clansmen today. Light to thy path, wind to thy sails, dreams to thy heart. Thank you, Amy Bean. I'd like to invite Scott McElvain, Vice President of the Clan McBain Association, to say, uh, an, read an address, which is actually from um, Pete. McIlvain, the president of the association, who couldn't be with us from America today. Scott. A salute to the memory of the American astronaut Alan Bean, an address by Peter McIlvain, president of the Clan McBean Association, delivered by Scott McIlvain, vice president of the Clan McBean Association, at the dedication of the memorial to Captain Alan Laverne Bean at the McBain Memorial Park above Doris by Plotness on Saturday, 6 August, 2022. In addition to celebrating the inauguration of Richard McBain of McBain, his 23rd chief of our ancient clan, we are commemorating this memorial, a column with a symbolic moon at its top, to a true hero of the clan, Captain United States Navy and NASA astronaut, Alan Laverne Bean. When the Apollo 12 lunar module Intrepid touched down in the moon's sea of storms, on 11 November 1969, Allen was at the control. Thus began the second of America's moon landings, and Allen Bean became the only, only the fourth human being to walk on the moon. Actually, Allen made two different excursions from Intrepid, with moonwalks lasting more than eight hours in total. And in a small bag of personal effects, he came to the surface of the moon with Allen, was a piece of Clan McBean carton, which, Upon the Apollo crew's return, return to Earth, became the clan's priceless moon tartan. As Alan pointed out in his later years, no tartan has traveled further in the universe. You can, you can see an image of Alan's note to the clan about the tartan and the moon tartan itself with his signature immortalized on this column. Apparently, when he was sourcing the tartan from weavers in Scotland to take with him to the moon, they asked him what he wanted it for told them he would be taking it to the moon, and they asked if he was going to be claiming the moon for Scotland. <laughs> he quickly replied no, he was going to claim it for Clan McBean. He had a quick whip. So who was this Alan Bean? Some might say he was of his generation, a typical American boy, but he grew up to be far, far more than that. Alan was born March 15, 1932 in New York, Texas. Arnold Horace Bean and Francis Caroline Murphy. His interest in aviation came early and he earned a private pilot's license while still in high school. He had 
attended the University of Texas as an ADROTC student. He graduated in 1955 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Aeronautical Engineering and was commissioned as an officer for the United States Navy. After flight school and four years as a carrier fire pilot, he moved on to become one of the U.S. Navy's premier test pilots. In October, 19, in October 1963, he was one of 14 pilots selected by NASA in its third group of trainee astronauts. In addition to the Apollo 12 moon landing mission in 1969, Allen was commander of the record-setting 59-day Skylab mission in 1973. He retired from the Navy in 1975, but remained with NASA as a Chief of Astronaut Selection and Training until his second retirement in 1981. He then began a third career as a highly talented artist, painting mostly in acrylics. Allen was a lifelong enthusiast concerning his Scottish heritage. He was an 11th generation direct male line descendant of Scottish immigrant John Bean of Exeter, New Hampshire. In 1975, when the John Bean Family Association was reorganized into Clan Bean in North America, Allen was among its first paid-up members. He also became good friends with Bernie Bean, genealogist and president of the Clan Association of that era, and with our 21st chief, Eustace McBain of McBain. Whether motivated by friendships or enthusiasm for his Scottish heritage, or both perhaps, in 1996, Allen attended the gathering of the Clan Bean in North America, its first under that name, in which Todd Gansey and presented the Clan Association with two most precious artifacts, a piece of the authentic moon carton and Allen's magnificent self-portrait of his moonwalk, in the paint of which he had embedded plates of the metal heat shield in the Apollo 12 spacecraft and covered the surface of the painting with moon dust in the soles of his space boots. Allen's was a gift beyond price, and those who were there recall the moment as breathtaking. Allen accepted our invitation to attend the Clan Association's 12th gathering in Stone Mountain, Georgia in October 2018, where we intended to honor him, the advent of the moon cart, and the 12th Apollo mission. Unfortunately, he'll, he fell ill on 12 May and during a business trip to Fort Wayne, Indiana, and passed away in Houston two weeks later on 26 May 2018. Four years on, we are here at the Big Bane Memorial Park, honored to be dedicating this appropriate and permanent memorial to Allen and his accomplishments. I'd like to invite Lisa McFarlane, um, our chief's partner, who herself has not been far away from this relevant space that she will share with you. While I never set foot on the moon, my spacecraft did touch down on a distant moon. Disser landed on Titan, Saturn's largest moon, as part of the Cassini spacecraft mission. As a girl, I was inspired to go into the field of planetary science by watching Star Trek and seeing women perform alongside men at the highest level. Maybe there are some girls out there that might be inspired by seeing me in this field. I got my PhD and worked in the field of planetary science for years. I met a lot of great and really smart people. There were many remarkable, unique, and amazing experiences. So hooray to Alan Bean and to Clan McBain, the Moon Clan, to the moon and back again. Here's to exploration at the highest level.
dedication of the memorial itself. <coughs> the first Scot to go to the moon took a small step for man and a great step for mankind. The fourth person to walk on the moon claimed it for our clan. What could be better? I think the stories like that keep our clan together. And what we need are your stories. We need the future stories of this group of people all here today to make a future that can stand alongside Alan Bean. I am so excited today to see all you here because that is a start, that is a commitment. Reach out to all you know, find as many stories as you can, take the history, learn from it, and bring it into the future. That's what we need, and that's what we are going to do. Thank you so much. McLean, who's a Doc Arick, kindly acting as chaplain of the day, will say some prayers. Almighty and everlasting God, you made the universe with all its marvelous order, its atoms, worlds, and galaxies, and the infinite complexity of living creatures. Grant that as we probe the mysteries of your creation, we may come to know you more truly and more surely fulfill our role in your eternal purpose. And in particular, we now remember the courage of Alan Bean as an astronaut as he pressed forward to the limits of humanity's experience and knowledge, reaching the moon and returning safe. And in this light, we dedicate this memorial to Alan Laverne Bean. And may all who see this marker also give glory to the Lord. And this I ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 So at this point, we are about to come to the end of the proceedings for this stage. But before we do, Ian McGillivray is going to come back and play a tune which remembers that before Alan Bean was, a, was an astronaut, he was an aviator in the United States Navy.
some people who might have a bit of difficulty. <laughs> and uh, and it seems a good place for us to stay because we've got a debate. Donald, would you like to just um, step forward and be ready here to say some words? Because um, some of you might be wondering what tough Richard and I are wearing today. Well, Peter's going to tell you something about it. We must thank Peter for his help in guiding us on the design of the car. There will be news um, to share on um, a greater production of it and how people can get it. Um, the heavy weight for men's kilts and a lighter weight um, for ladies' skirts and kilts. would like to uh, um, show appreciation for this in appointing Stuart McBain as the Chief's Piper and as a gift to offer him.
huge honour, and he is going to act as the MC for the occasion and make sure that we don't miss anything in the process. And I've got the notes to make sure, um, <laughs> just in case. So, Lord Lyon. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm very happy to be with you this afternoon and to do this very minor part in the whole afternoon, which is to preside over the inauguration of your new chief. Uh, it's very important that we do these signs and symbols of clan life and to mark the different journeys that we've taken from our history to today into the future. And all of these things are part and parcel of it. Uh, the Lord Lion, as you'll know, uh, has his roots in the old uh, Celtic tradition of the High Shenike. And it was the High Shenike's job to be there at the coronation of any king to make sure that the genealogy was properly recited. Uh, you weren't allowed to read it in those days, you had to recite it. Uh, and, the, and the High Shenike was there to be verification that the king was the rightful king. Inaugurations of chiefs have been varied over the centuries uh, and have been practiced in some um, clans and families and not others. Uh, but it's for me, it's a very important ceremony because it marks this stage and recognizes Richard as your new chief uh, and actually the future of the clan together. So let me call you all in sundry to this gathering today of this clan to proclaim and announce that your new chief is duly inaugurated and follows in the tradition of clan life of this clan and of the people who support it. In the declaration of our growth, there was an amazing change in the constitutional law in the 14th century within Europe that those who headed the country no longer were there over the country, but were of the country. And so the king was always the king of Scots. And the principal function of that king was to serve his people. And that came from the clan and from the Celtic period traditions, and it follows to today. So you, the people of this clan, come to announce and to make sure that you are satisfied that this is your rightful chief and it is his duty to actually serve you and to promote this clan wherever he may go. So let me now call on your Shenike, the Shenike of your own clan, to make a statement in relation to the chief's genealogy. So we are all gathered here today, we, the clan McBain, and in the company of our kinsmen of Van Hatton, um, Macintosh, McGillivray, and others, to proclaim our new chief, Richard McBain of McBain, 23rd hereditary chief of our clan, whose inheritance is indisputed. And to prove it, I'm going to read out his genealogy, firstly in Gaelic, and then I shall go through it in a little bit more detail in English. But I present to you here, Ruchart Macamish, Figusgen, Figulium Frederick, Figulium Fig Alistair, Figulium Fig Farachar. Iaian, Big Uliam, Big Fail, Big Iaian, Big Anuish, Big Fail, Big Uliam, Big Giluzio, Giluzia, Big Fail, Volgeno, Mulmura, Big Bihan Moor, Big Mulmura, Bo and Hacken. So <laughs> Got through that. Ian will tell me whether it was sufficient later. <laughs> but I'm going to share a bit more detail because I think we're all gathered here together today. Um, so if you'll forgive me. So we have in front of us here Richard McBain of McBain, son of James, with his first wife, Molly Joss. James, son of Houston with his wife, Margaret Keith. And Houston was the first of the family to be born in the United States in 1902 
in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It was Houston who created this McBain Park after he became chief and built the monument at the top, which I invite you all to go and see at the end, where we all stand today. By doing so, he created a very special gathering place, a spiritual place, back in the home of the chiefs on the land they once held, overlooking Loch Ness, which once upon a time before the trees all grew, uh, you could see very, very clearly from this very spot, but you can see it further up the hill. Now, Houston um, was the son of William Frederick McBain with his wife, Anne Kathleen Houston. And he was the son of William with his wife, Catherine McIntosh, who is remembered as being from Moy Hall. She remains a little bit of a mystery. We suspect she was living in the estate of Moy Hall and some connection to the Macintosh at the time. And they married in Montreal in 1849. He was the son of Alexander of La Guerre in Ontario by his wife, Susan Davidson. And he was the son of William with his wife, Christina MacDonald. And they lived in Petori in the parish of Albi and emigrated with their family to Canada where they settled in Glengarry, Ontario along with many, many other Highlanders and kinsmen of their own. He was the son of Farquhar, who had migrated to live with his family in the parish of Alby in Badenoch. And Farquhar was the son of John, brother to our famous chief, Major Gillies Moore McBain, who will be laying a wreath to a flood tomorrow. Leaving a son and heir, Captain Donald McBain, Mrs. Gillies' son, who, who served in Canada in Fraser's Highlanders. He left two daughters, so the chiefship passed to his cousin, Farquhar's son, William in Petori. John, the brother of Gillysmore, was the fifth and youngest son of William McBain of Kinhile, and his wife, Jean McIntosh, daughter of Donald McIntosh of Kailaki, a distinguished cadet branch of the McIntoshes of McIntosh. William was present at Moy in September 1724, and signed the final agreement that finally settled for all time the dispute between the Chief of Mackintosh and Clooney McPherson over who was captain of Manhattan. And of course it was Mackintosh. William was the son of Paul McBain of Kinhile and his wife Anne Urquhart, who was the daughter of Thomas Urquhart of Canudi, minister of Ardesia, who descended from the Urquharts of property. Paul's younger brother, a coat of arms granted to him by the Lord Lion in 1672 and it was at that time that Mackintosh also got his arms confirmed and many of the chiefs of Manhattan at that time. Paul was the son of John McQueen of Newhile and his wife Mary McQueen who was daughter of Donald McQueen of Corabra, the chief of the McQueens of Strathdown. It is interesting to find John McPhail, a parent of Kenhile, back in his family's old homeland in Loch Arbor at Inverlochy on the 31st of August 1619, witnessing a charter by Maclean of Ardgower, Charles Maclean, of lands included in the Scaddock. John was the son of Angus and his wife Isabel Bailey. It was Angus that signed the 1609 Land of Union of Manhattan and Termin. daughter, interestingly enough, Catherine, was the ancestress of all the Shaw chiefs of Tordaric, through her marriage to Angus of Tordaric, son of another Bane, son of Robert. The McBain chief, Angus, was the son of Paul, who is Paul McWilliam McGillies in Kinhile, appeared as a witness to Sacine at D Dunacton in February 16, 1568-9 those days in church here, so it would have been 1569. As his name tells us, this Paul was the son of William, 
who under the name of William McGillies MacPhail signed Clanchatton's band in 1543. William's father was Gillies, the son of Paul, who was descended from one of the sons of Mulmura, anglicised as Milmore, MacBain, who were recorded as Paul Gillies Milmore Bond, otherwise Younger, and Farquhar. The absence of knowledge of the identity of Paul's father is explained as arising from the result of the Battle of Parlor, in which there were so many casualties that it became nicknamed Red Harlow. In 1411 the battle occurred, and um, Lachlan Mackintosh of Kimrara's manuscript history records that Malcolm Mackintosh of Mackintosh, fighting in the army of Donald, Lord of the Isles, lost many in this battle of his friends and people, especially of the clan Bane. As I've said, Paul, the father of Gillies, was descended from Mulmura, Milmore, son of in Gallic Macbain, given the epithet more, which means big or great. So one can imagine he was a big guy. It was this main more who is the patriarch of the clan and from whom the clan Macbain is named. This first Bane, founder of our clan, was the son of another. Milmore, or in Gallic, Mulmura, between servant of Mary, who was of the lineage of the ancient Kanhapi, and lived with his family in Loch Arbor. It's a rather interesting tale, the length of which is too long for me to tell you, but I'll, I'll, I'll cut it a little bit short, but a fascinating survival of what sounds like a first-hand uh, story handed down probably by the Shenahins and passed on and finally written down in the 1700s or copied from an earlier document that was one of the lost documents from which the Kinrara manuscript history of the Macintoshes was written. I'll just share something, it's rather interesting. So this first thing, as I say, was the son of Momara. And, and, and he came, they, the tradition tells us, in the party of his cousin, Eva, the heiress of Clanhattan, when she married Angus Mackintosh, said by the historians to have been in 1291. Bain became noted as a particularly faithful retainer of Angus Mackintosh against John Comyn, known as the Red Comyn, the great rival of Robert the Bruce for the throne of Scotland. You'll remember that Robert the Bruce killed him in uh, uh, and, uh, and, and so that was the end of the Red Common. But before Robert the Bruce did us such a favour, the Red Common was causing great problems for us. He was the most inveterate enemy of Angus Mackintosh. And because of his fidelity to Angus, Bain was hated by the Red Common, and neither he nor his children were able to live in peace in Loch Arbor so long as the Red Common lived in Ivnilochi. Bain's son, Milmore, and his sons killed the Red Common steward of Inverlochy Castle, and then they proceeded afterwards to go and kill the Red Common servants, who were remembered as Patton and Kesson. This account, which I will save you the length of, goes to extraordinary detail to describe the precise mechanics of the fight between these four people. But there's one very interesting thing, that um, uh, this happened before 1306, we know this because these people were the servants of the Red Common while he was still living, so before 1306, probably very soon before. And this is, this, and, 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 and Bain had left Loch Arbor and dwelt at um, Rutherin in Brave Bay Hill. But Milmore with Bain and his sons, um, sorry, Milmore and Furquhar, Milmore's sons, um, uh, came to um, the, uh, the Macintosh, Angus Macintosh, and during the fight, the extraordinary thing is that Milmore's axe struck Kesson's axe and got embedded in, 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 in the cross of it. And so when they turned up to see Macintosh, he still had these two axes on his shoulder in the shape of a cross. It might be that these were Loch Arbor axes. Our is so long that would give you the shape of the cross if it was embedded. And uh, 
and um, and it was uh, Angus McIntosh said, "What on earth is that you've got on your shoulder?" And they explained what happened in the fight, and so at that point they became nicknamed as the tribe of Bane Moore of the Cross. And that's a very ancient name that has not been written down elsewhere. But later on, as I say, they came up to Brave Badenoch, and then Melmore McLean and his sons came north to William McIntosh, Angus' son, at Connage in Petty, where he was residing. And there, for themselves and their posterity, they took protection of him and his successors as their chief and captain in Manhattan. And of course, the McBains and the McIntoshes all served um, under McIntosh alongside Robert the Bruce and would have been present there at the Battle of Time and other battles. So very significant. So this long history comes the end of the piece, really, um, explains how the McBains came from their original ancient homeland in Loch Arbor, up here around Inverness and settled just down the road at Kirkisle by Loch Ness. <coughs> Hand over. Lord Ryan. I now call upon the Chief to come here and to answer questions of his commitment to the plan. Chief, do you confirm that you are the rightful Chief of this plan? I do. Do you promise to protect and serve the clansfolk? I do. Are you willing to take the responsibilities of Chief of this ancient clan? I am. May God bless you and confirm you in that work. And I now invite the clan members to be upstanding. And as your chief has committed himself to you, you now commit yourself to him. The response to my question to you will be, we are willing with God's help. Are you willing to follow your chief and support him in all his endeavours on behalf of the clan, we are willing to help him. Please be seated. I now call upon the Chief's Piper to play the tune, Call of the Chief. the call on a symbol of his office to be presented to the chief by way of a specially commissioned chromat. So just out of interest, that tune, um, we, we changed it, um, so we, we didn't have time to tell the whole time, but it, it was actually interesting, it was written by Richard's grandfather, called 
Phantom Lick Bank, written by the Pike Major at the Clan McLean Pike Band of Calgary in Alberta. Then the head falls a piece tomorrow at Blubby. Please forgive me, Lord Lion, for changing the, changing the order. I'd like to ask Corinna to come forward. Thank you, Corinna. Corinna, one of the youngest members of the clan here. It's also good to have a, a girl, a lady. Um, playing a part in this Lisa, which is very important. And uh, we hope the women will remember this uh, forever. So, Richard, I'm presenting this promise on behalf of your clan. I see people have contributed to this. And as a staff, it is a symbol of your ancient authority. Remember before God in this place that is so special to us, our clan, and especially we remember our new chief, Richard, and we ask you to bless Richard in his task of leading our clan and the worldwide family, and we ask you to give him the gifts of fortitude and understanding patience and kindness in all that he does in his relation with the clan and us. We rejoice in our clan's heritage and we pray that we will pass to generations to come our story, neither glorying in its great deeds nor shrinking from its sad times having a right judgment in all things. May our clan today be rich in mutual understanding and forbearance, in courtesy and 
kindness, bearing one another's joys and sadness as one great family. And finally, we ask that as we take pride in our Tartan and our new Tartan, to bless those who wear and display it in faith with honour, a token and a memory of our ancestors and forebears, and also a sign of our fellowship with one another today and in the years to come. And this prayer I make in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the very Reverend Alan McLean of Dockarak for the prayer, which makes it a very significant part of the inauguration that God's blessing is bestowed upon not only in Jesus, but upon us and you as clans folk and as, as part of the living Scotland. I now call upon Macintosh of Macintosh to address the company. Thank you very much, uh, Lord Lyon, Councillor, uh, Richard, McBain, McBain, Lisa, uh, Janicky, uh, members of uh, Clan uh, McBain and other members of other clans, including, of course, uh, members of Clan Hatton. It is uh, lovely to be with you all here, uh, and a very uh, great pleasure for me to have been invited just to say a few words uh, this afternoon as uh, really a, a, a representative, as one of the constituent chiefs of Clan Hatton. As you've heard in uh, great detail from the Shenagy, uh, Macintosh and uh, McBain have a long and uh, proud history, very strong ties, uh, stretching all the way back uh, through to Eva and my ancestor uh, Angus and uh, we're very pleased to be able to be continuing these ties today. Again, you heard of the strength of uh, uh, loyalty that was shown uh, and the gratitude of Macintosh to uh, the, Mac the McBains uh, who fought at Harlow. Uh, the, Mac the McBains have been a very uh, early and strong clan within Clan Hatton and have always, we have always been glad uh, to work together sometimes through tough times fighting and thankfully more recently uh, we have much, uh, we are able to enjoy uh, much uh, more uh, pleasing events together than battles. Uh, this park as you've heard uh, was established by uh, Houston McBain, the grandfather of Richard, and has been lovingly maintained uh, by Houston and then by uh, Richard's father, uh, James, and indeed uh, by Richard himself. And uh, we are glad to see this uh, lovely uh, the lovely heritage here, uh, a warm reminder of what we all share. So it really does give me great pleasure as both Houston and James had great qualities as chiefs. They were very warm, very intelligent, very knowledgeable, uh, lovely, uh, lovely qualities that they brought to our wider clan hat. And having uh, met Richard and been able to spend especially some time over the last couple of days with him, uh, we're very pleased that he, uh, he also will bring uh, wonderful qualities to, to our clan. So it gives us the greatest pleasure to welcome Richard as a fellow constituent chief of Clan Hatton uh, to the clan. I now call upon the Chief of the McBeans to address his kinsfolk. Well, once again, <laughs> uh, this is a surprise and special and 
as a symbol. It's something I hope I can live up to. Um, I'm proud of what we've done here over the last three years. This monument took a great deal of effort. Uh, donations from many of you, very hard work. And I would like to call out a couple people that have been very, very instrumental in making all of this come together. So first, Philip, if you could step forward. Philip is now our Shawnee. And that was made formal about six months ago, maybe longer. Time flies. <laughs> but without this man, the organization you see today would not be here. If Alan could come up front, please. In the years before I've come over, I designated Alan as the chieftain of this clan to represent me and our clan at events on this side of the pond. And one of those events has been with the fighting group all. Please jump in here. <laughs> the cat's glove. To run an, or, an event in conjunction with the McDonald Academy of Arms called the McBain Event, which celebrates the fighting style of Donald McBain, who was a master swordsman, the soldier who jumped the soldier's leap at, uh, at Killycrankey, and also something of a character. more people I'd like to recognize. I'm not sure they want to be recognized. But if you saw over here, we have two stone benches. And there's a lovely poem up there you should all go up and read. This platform, this monument, this day could not happen without hours and hours and hours of phone calls and then many more hours of actual work and I want to give a special thanks to John McBain, who worked crazily hard on this, and Anthony Swine. They're the ones who did all this work. They're the ones who put this thing up. And much of it was done as volunteer work. So, I think we've done a lot in just a year's time. We have a monument of somebody who's important who deserves to have a monument. We have a new official tartan for a hunting tartan. We have a Shanahi. We have a chieftain. What more could you want? So let's move into the future and let's grow. Let's grow together. Thank you. For those of you who could stand, would you please stand? I, Joseph John Morrow, Lord Lion, King of Arms, by appointment of Her Majesty the Queen, on this the feast day of the Transfiguration, and by the authority of my office, do hereby proclaim Richard McBain of McBain to be your undisputed chief. Long live the chief. Long, Long live, live the chief. chief. I now call on the chaplain to pronounce the benediction. people of many faiths here. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace now and always. Amen. I now invite the Chief's Piper to step forward and play a tune but I won't tell you what it is. <laughs> so, while the piper is playing his tune, there should be some bottles of whiskey and some little... Oh. <laughs> They're over there. So, if somebody could... If anybody could be helping Margaret while the tune's being played, 
to hand round so everybody has a tot. And just wait, because we're going to do a toast. All right? Um, and um, we'll, 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 we'll do that and make sure everyone's got one. So however many is needed to help, let's get them all handed out. And the pipe will play until everybody's got their tot filled up, even up here on stage. But, but just, no, I just before you start, as your new chief, I have to admit to my first mistake. <laughs> Margaret McBain over there has also been unbelievably important in making all this happen. And she certainly deserves a huge round of applause. And my apologies for not recognizing her. I'll take two if you've got an extra. <laughs> Oh, I can, you can throw that in. But we're full of you. Is there anyone that has a shot? Oh. Half a whiskey. No? Okay, so Thank before you. we start, it's a huge thanks. This whiskey was very kindly donated by the Tomatin Whiskey Distillery in Strathdown. Now, the Tomatin Distillery was actually built on land that was part of the estate of the McFanes of Martin. The very first distillery was built by the McFanes. So we have a, a very special relationship. It, it is our unofficial whiskey, 
we're, we're, we're talking to them and uh, about making it an official relationship. Um, so more news of that in due course. A huge round of thanks to Martin and Lorraine and their colleagues at the Martin Distillery um, for the very, very generous contribution of this whiskey. Now we're going to do a toast. And when, when I shout out the Chief's War Cry, you've all seen it, okay? You're going to follow me, all right? And repeat it. He's going to have two. Chief, Chief's prerogative. So, the toast is Richard McBain of McBain, 23rd Hereditary Chief of the Clan McBain. King Kyle! And now you know why we ask you to come so far. <laughs> well done. Yes. Now, Chief, ladies and gentlemen, my pleasing duty is to do two things now. One is to say that you're all welcome to the informal gathering back in the Torn Tin. And I'm sure that's how we continue in terms of enjoying our great hospitality. And also, through the office that I hold, I now declare this gathering to be formally closed. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you. So, we'll see you all down indoors, but it's difficult to send upon them if they even attempt it. So go around, have a look at the seats that Richard mentioned, and just wonder.